Hello and welcome to the Sneaker Doodle Knits channel. I am Jessica, the knitter and designer behind Sneaker Doodle Knits, and in this video I am talking about my Remembering Summer Infinity Scarf pattern. So in this pattern I will talk about the inspiration behind the design, I will talk about the level of difficulty of the techniques that I used in this design, and I'll talk about some yarn options for this design. So to get started, um, the Remembering Summer scarf was part of an idea that I had to essentially remember and pay respects to the summer when the summer is fading away and we're going into winter essentially. Um, I grew up in Montana, then I lived in Wyoming for five years, so I'm kind of used to what winter is like when it's cold and dark and blah <laughs> for six months out of the year. Um, so I've always loved summer and I hate being cold and I hate when the cold comes. So I decided that I wanted to try to tell the story of and capture the joy of summer and the bright memories and the happiness and the sunshine and all of the wonderful things that I associate with summer. So this is not a summer design. This is not meant to be like a summer scarf. Um, this also has, I have a Remembering Summer shawl, part of the same collection. Um, and it's also very much a winter shawl. So this is supposed to be something warm and cozy to make you think bright, happy thoughts about summer when you're in the dead of winter and wishing the snow would just go away. Um, so yes, this design is an infinity scarf, um, but it is worked flat and then it can be seamed at the end or you can cast on provisionally and use a Kitchener stitch um, at the end. The first stitch, oh, and I'll make a note, not make a note, but <laughs> I will uh, maybe give a little disclaimer here. You'll see that my scarf varies a lot in thickness, and what I've done in the pattern is I've had you change, asked you to change your needle sizes so that you won't have so much difference in the the width of your scarf um, if that's something that bothers you. Something that I've noticed with mine is like it just kind of curls up anyway so it's not a big deal but if that bothers you while I'm showing you um, do know that that um, I've tried to provide instructions to avoid that when you knit it. So. Um, each section is separated by, and the pattern starts with just plain garter stitch, and I refer to this as the open fields. So it's just like your plain open garden or your field um, before you've planted anything in it. It's just kind of barren and sitting there. Then I go into this section, which is a, th a thick um, moss stitch kind of texture and I just refer to this as the seeds. So this is just like you have a big pile of seeds that are ready to be planted um, at the very beginning of spring or summer depending on where you live. And then the next section is the rows of your seeds once they've been planted. So. The whole story, in case you didn't get that figured out already, is the story of basically a plant through summer. So from being sewn into the ground or from just being in a packet when you first have your seeds all the way through when it is flourishing and blossoming and providing the beauty of summer. Um, so, yes, this is once your seeds have been sown in the ground, you have your nice beautiful rows of, of seeds that have been planted and you're excited for them to finally start growing. 
because it's summertime. And then, of course, I have dropped stitch, a dropped stitch suction, and this resembles all of the rain that comes onto your beautiful plot of land to help your seeds grow. And then, the next section is bobbles, which represents the sun popping out. Um, sorry, I have an end sticking out. Anyway, um, it's the sun popping out to provide sunshine for your beautiful little seeds. And then we have another section of rows, but this is like the budding of your plants. So you can see that you have rows and in the middle of those rows you have, you have your seeds starting to sprout and to blossom and you have, I guess not blossom, but they're starting to sprout and bud so that you can see where they are coming out of the ground now. And then finally, the last section, which is my favorite section, is the blossom section. So to me, this is just the flowers blossoming and blooming at the peak of summer when it's just so beautiful and bright and colorful and pretty. So, that's the story behind it all. Um, with this scarf, I tried to assign colors that represented what I was, um, I guess, referring to in the stitch pattern. So like, the, the seeds, I didn't have like a brown color, but the closest color I had was this like deep orange. And then with the, maybe the sprouts, coming out of the ground in your rows. That's a bright green. And of course the rain is a blue. And the sunshine is a light orange. And then when you're starting to get those, those buds that are really starting to grow, that's a deeper green. And then finally the flowers, the blossoms, are a beautiful purple. Um, so that's one way that you can select your colors. You can try to fit the theme. Um, what I did in my shawl pattern was I kind of just picked colors that I liked. Um, so of course that totally makes sense as well. What I have done is I have created color recommendations on a blog post. Um, so like in this sample of course I have one, two, three, four, five. I use seven colors so there's the gray plus one color per unique section. Um, so in the blog post I have included combinations of seven colors that I think would be really cool and I've included combinations of four colors. Is that right? Four colors. Yeah, four colors so you would have one color for the garter stuff, and then you would have three colors that you would repeat twice, which is like what I did in the shawl. And I have three color suggestions, and I have two color suggestions, and I have one color suggestions. So lots of different things that you can do with color with this pattern. Um, in that same blog post, I also simultaneously include yarn recommendations for what I think would work really well for this pattern. So the yarn that I used was Karen X Pantone by... I don't know who it's by. Karen X Pantone. Anyway, it, it expired yarn, a, a yarn that is no longer being made, no longer in production. Um, so I think the only place you can get it now is like Michael's Clarence if your your sh local store still has some in Clarence available. Um, but in that blog post, I include a whole bunch of different yarn recommendations. Um, so I have that for both the scarf and the shawl. The shawl is a fingering weight and the scarf is a bulky weight. Um, and I also, so I have that blog post linked below. I also have a blog post that talks about 
the whole story about the design inspiration that I kind of just told. I'll have that link down below as well. And then I will have linked all of the places that you can purchase the pattern if you don't have the pattern already. Um, so that's Ravelry, that is Pattern Vine, and that is Love Crafts. Now if you purchase the pattern on Ravelry, you have the option to purchase the collection. So if you purchase both the shawl and the scarf together, you will receive 15% off. But you have to purchase that as a collection um, in your first purchase. You can't purchase this and then try to go purchase the collection and get 15% off because that's not the way Ravelry is set up. Um, so yes, that is all about the yarn and the design. And I think that should hopefully answer all of your questions. If you need any pattern support through the pattern, you're always welcome to reach out to me. Um, I guess the one thing I forgot to talk about was the level of the pattern. So this is not intended as like a very, very beginner knitter pattern. Um, obviously there's a lot of textures, a lot of different things going on. Um, but this is a great pattern for an adventurous beginner. So like a beginner that knows how to knit and knows how to purl. Um, yeah, I think you do need to know how to purl. I can't remember for sure. Anyway, if you know how to knit and how to purl and you want to learn how to make some more textures, this is the perfect kind of design for you. Perfect pattern. Because um, it goes through a lot of different textures and teaches you a lot of different techniques. In my, all of my patterns, I do have um, tutorials linked to teach you how to make each of these stitches. So I think you should be well equipped to learn if you're not familiar already. Well, my camera cut off on me, um, so I don't remember exactly what all it missed. I don't know exactly what all it missed, um, but if you're looking for any of the links, there's two blog posts, three places to buy the pattern that will all be linked down below. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me. Email, website, social media, whatever. Um, I'm happy to provide pattern support. And I hope that this video answered all of your questions regarding the Remembering Summer scarf. Um, it's a fun, engaging um, pattern that I think is really good for learning textures. So I hope to see you around. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up like thumb, thumbs up button to like this video if you found it informative and helpful and if you felt like you learned a lot about the design. Um, and if you're interested in more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And oh and of course you can go check out more videos like this on my channel. I have videos that have tutorials to knitting techniques that I use in my patterns and I have a pattern just like this for every single one of my designs um, that talk about design inspiration and yarn and techniques and all of that. Um, so I hope you find this all very helpful and I hope to see you around. Happy knitting!